Now, as we've said, the organ is located all over the room, so in order to get to see the pipes, it takes a little bit of an effort to get there. So we get to go to some places that normal visitors to the cathedral don't get to see. So to let you know where we are, first of all, that's the altar behind me. So we're standing here next to the sanctuary. We're over by the side chapels. So if you'll follow me. Here we're completely behind the altar, we're behind the console. This is the, uh, the hallway of the bishops, they call it, because there are all of the symbols of the bishops in the, in the mosaics above. Uh, this also takes us back to the sacristy through these doors. And we can, see, we can see down the nave of the church, we're up at the very front of the building from here. Here in this hallway, this is actually where the swell and choir used to be, they were up above in chambers that were up there. They've moved everything back when they added the sacristy and added this part of the building uh, in the 40s. So the pipes have actually been pushed farther back from the room, which provides an interesting acoustic challenge of getting the sounds uh, down from those chambers are actually higher than the old ones were too, even though the openings are in the same place. So uh, we'll take a look up there soon. But first, we're gonna go up to the gallery. So from here, we go out this door It says cathedral staff only. We get to sneak back here. So from here, we're in a little ante room, uh, and it's all, as you can see, marble uh, and very ornate in here as well. But this is where some of the veneer rubs off. So we've gone up one level, and uh, this would have been the door that would have gone straight out into the choir and swell chambers. Um, today we can see it doesn't go anywhere. It's like boarded all of that up when they closed that. So to get up to the gallery, we have to go up to another level. So now we're up in the gallery level. We're on the same level uh, as the uh, great and the solo in the pedal division. It's also about 15 degrees warmer up here than it was downstairs, uh, nature being up so high in this old building. So uh, I'll show you how we get into the great. From here, we can see where they've built a chamber wall, essentially, but it's all open to the air when we come in here. So as we walk in, we're actually among the pedal pipes, as Horst said. There's not a ton of independent pedal stuff. There's a lot of borrowing. You see the tromba on the left and then the principal on the right. There's a skinny little walkboard up here that you can use to access the top of those pipes for tuning. The low end of the principal is here on the floor. As we walk through, there's a lot of winding on the floor to navigate, so you have to be careful not to step on anything. See some of the open woods there in the back against the wall? The bottom of the 16-foot tromba. The principal chests. In front of us is the 10 and 2 thirds quint. That's a really unique stop to have independently in an organ. There's the bottom of the open wood. It's laid down on its side against the back wall. Get under this board and then we can See the top of the open wood, the top of the tromba.
They have their walk forward for accessing the tops for tuning. As we turn around, we see the miters of the 10 and 2 thirds, some of the facade pipes, and then the great chests are behind this wall of pipes. Just the great chest with the mixture. You can also see some of the digital speakers there that are on top of the wood pipes. These are for the digital voices of the pedal. Have to go under these non-speaking facade pipes so that we can get out in front. See some wind line there wrapped up with insulation. And here we are. Here's our two main great chests. This is one of the best views of the building. It's the old molar relay box. All of that has been replaced. And these are molar wind chests installed in the 1980s. By the way, it's about 82 degrees up here. It was nice and cool down on the first floor. It's uh, pretty warm up here. Now we're up on the walk board, so we can see the great pipes here. The flutes are all on this side. Arabella's in front and the doppel flute behind it. Definitely has two mouths, one on either side. And there's the four-foot flute and the reed in the back. Another look at those open woods and the speakers on top of them. The solo division is in a box behind those pipes. Somebody left the light on in there. And here's a look underneath at all that green molar winding. And then a non-speaking facade in front of the solo. Here's something interesting. This little device right here is contacting the lowest pipe of the first diapason, and that is the temperature sensor for the Walker Digital Sounds. It monitors the temperature of this pipe and uses that to adjust the tuning to match. Now, the overall tuning of the digital is adjusted every time the organ is tuned, but it works pretty well. Underneath we go to get into the solo area. Back here behind the grate is the relay ladder for reaching the tops of the pipes. Here's the door into the solo. There's the diapason right in front of us, all against the back wall. Big decked pummer. a ladder to get up to the walk board for tuning. There's a look underneath. Not a lot to see. front is the diapason. The uh, Celeste is behind that. Oh, then the so this is uh, an extension of the wind line for the tremolo. The tremolo is required to be a certain distance away from the chest to function, so let's make the air go up in the air and back down. You can see the speakers for the digital there in the back. In the front, we have the French horn, the eight-foot trumpet, and the four-foot clarion.
This is definitely the smallest chamber uh, in the organ. It has swell shades on two sides, although one side was closed because the motor was turned off on that day. Upper and lower shades that are connected by one motor. You can see how this room was just constructed out here in the gallery to make a chamber out of nothing. And the door here, if you peek out, we can see the solo relay is right there. Well, not there, but there on that side is the box. And if we go out there, you can see the relay, and we're back out in another hallway, just like the other side. We've come all the way through the front organ. And there's the hallway, and we can see the massive pedal speakers there against the wall. I don't know if we've done a good job of giving you an idea of the scale of these things. They're the size of refrigerators taller than refrigerators even. That's where the base 32 foot comes from. Alright, we're back in the grate. We're working our way back out of the organ. Take another look at these pipes. Under the facade. That's the third diapason right there in front of us. back in front of the grate and under the facade and we find ourselves back in the pedal division. We got the principal. And the arrangement on this tromba has been changed. It's, it's very interesting. It is a row of two pipes coming down and then as we get close to the top it splits into three. But instead of going one, two, three across, it goes one and two on the outside and then the highest six notes suddenly pop up in the middle. It's a very confusing arrangement. I don't know. I think they used to be crammed more tightly together and somebody added this little extra thing on the side. But it's still not the most ideal way to, to order them. It's really easy to get lost when you're tuning it. And from here, we head on back out to the gallery. From here to get back to the rear gallery, we have to walk the entire length of the church. So follow me. We're going to speed this part up a little bit. Here's another view of the cathedral that most people don't get. Did I mention it's about 82 degrees up here? So we've made it to the gallery console. Um, this is actually an Aeolian Skinner console that was from uh, St. Bartholomew's Church in New York City. That was the largest pipe organ in New York City. So uh, come look at this thing. I call this the novelty oversized console, five manuals. I don't know how many draw knobs. Uh, if you wanted to try to direct the choir, I don't know how you would even do that. That was the purpose of this organ back here is to lead the choral singing when the choir is back here. But um, it's got all of the controls for both the gallery organ, which is a great, great and pedal. And then uh, all of the divisions of the front organ can be controlled from right here. One interesting problem with having these two consoles, normally organists are told when you leave an organ, leave the swell shades open. The idea that air can move in and the temperature can stabilize. Most modern organs automatically open the shades no matter where you leave the shoes. The problem is if you leave the swell shoe open here, it's sending the signal that says open those shades. If you try to close it down there, it can't turn this one off. So here the rule is always leave the swell shades closed because you might be at the next console the next time and you won't be able to make the swell shades work. So this is the opening for the gallery division. Um, all of the sound comes out of this one little opening. Uh, I think it, this is where the original organ was installed, and there's another chamber on the other side that would be the same. Um, I don't know what kind of opening that one had, but I hope it was bigger than this. The organ in there is actually um, the echo organ from Carnegie Hall. When that organ came out, Kilgan took it out, or somebody did. It made its way to St. Louis, and we see it in here now. 
If you're hearing a strange squeaking noise, it's because the swell shades are stuck right between completely open and not quite completely open, uh, and it's making the swell shades move a little bit, and there's a tiny little flutter there, so that's interesting. I'll show you how we get into there. We have to go around the corner. So the panel on the left actually covers access for the blower. It's in that little room and this fan is there to help with some temperature regulation. So this is inside the gallery division. Um, there is one big main chest here on the floor and then there are some new chests that have been added above and over here above the blower room, there's two added chests. Um, I've seen it in the shop notes that this came from Carnegie Hall. One small change that was made, uh, in the front there's a four foot octave and originally that was a musette. And apparently not long after installation, uh, Kilgan came in and replaced that. So a little buzzy regal reed wasn't what they wanted, so they've got a four foot octave. At the time that the dome division was added, uh, these chests were put in by Wix. These are Wix chests and there are, uh, there's a, some principal pipes and there's a mixture up there. And then in addition there's a couple of pedal ranks uh, back here, or a pedal rank and a keyboard rank. I believe that's also a four foot principle. So uh, those were all added uh, by Wix recently. The digital speakers are back there too. Those were added by Wix as well. There's an interesting layout issue up here on this mixture. And I can't see it from here. I have to get a ladder to look up there. But um, these are what are called switched mixtures. On a Wix organ, all the action is electric. So all of the uh, pipes of one rank have the same common ground. So by putting a switch, you can disconnect that ground. And you can make that rank not play. The reason you do that, it's in a mixture, it's frequently easier to tune if you can turn off, say, the fifths or the, the unisons. A lot of people say that's not the proper way to do it because it changes the way the air flows. Um, on a higher pressure mixture, it might not matter quite as much as on a lower one, but it does make it easier that you can only deal with, you know, you know a unison at a time or a fifth, a fifth at a time. And so it's laid out to make it as easy as possible because it's up here above your head and there's a lot of little ranks. All of those pipes are Aeolian Skinner, by the way, that were donated along with the Dome Division pipes. One other quirky thing about this big chest in here, it's put in backwards. Normally, if you're standing uh, at an organ looking out, the uh, low C is gonna be over here on your right side, C sharp is gonna be on your left side. This is when the pipes are divided, uh, you know, in a V shape. For some reason in this organ, they put it in backwards. C is over there, C sharp is over here on the right side. It messes me up every time I come in here, but uh, that's the case, don't know why that happened. So we're looking at the main chest of the gallery division. We see the horn in the back, the two flutes there in the middle, and then the strings are in front. Then we have that principal out there in the front, although you can see something else has been changed as well. Not sure what happened there. Then there's some offsets off to the side for some of the pedal and the eight foots. The reed is back there, the 16 foot end of the wall horn. And above our head, we see the added principle. This is on the Wix chest. You can tell it's got those Schwimmer regulators. And here's a peek at all the mixtures up there. From this point of view, you can see that the layout was supposed to have improved uh, tuning access and may actually have made it more difficult. There's some places where little pipes are hiding behind big pipes. You can see how big the opening there potentially could have been. Maybe that was the original opening for the organ chambers. We have some more offsets with pedal pipes along the wall and some pipes that are haskled. I don't know if Wix or Moeller did that, or Kilgan even. I feel like it looks like a Wix thing. There's the relay and the electronics below, next to the wall for the blower. And just a quick look up here at the two chests that were added. Sorry, that's all we got. There's a look underneath, it's very tight. 
To get to the bottom of the reed, you have to squeeze through here, go around that corner, which is much easier to do right now when the organ is turned off and the regulators are not inflated. Okay, time out now. Here's where I tell you that this video was not shot in the order that you're viewing it. And actually, it, it wasn't even all shot in one day. Uh, we did things in the order that was convenient both for us and the cathedral, which means maybe it wasn't in the way that made the most sense. So here's me back downstairs in the Hall of Bishops, uh, giving a wonderful description of the old swell and choir chambers. But sadly, the audio didn't get turned on for this take. I'm still sticking this in here, however, because it shows you how we access the sacristy to get into the swell in the choir. So here we're in the sacristy of the church. Uh, as you can see, there's closets uh, all around, um, but there's one over here that's special. And through a narrow walkway there, we can get up to the swell. Makes for a little bit of a hazard uh, to have that hole in the floor, but as you can see, these chambers are really big. It's very spacious. Um, we still have some mitering in here, but most of the eight-foot pipes are full length. Um, it's really easy to get to everything. The chests are, are very high up off the floor, but the swell openings are really not that big, so it's a challenge to get the sound out of here and out into the room. And then this is the swell division, just in the neighboring door here. Again, another big spacious chamber, uh, lots of room. I'm going to show you something over here. There is a tiny little opening in the ceiling, and that's how you used to get up to the great chambers back when they were all, all in chambered above us on this level. Instead, they're out closer to the nave of the church, but still up on that gallery level. There's apparently a little room, horse mentioned the little towers you can see. Um, well, that's where that goes. I've never been up there. Wrong. I have since been up there. You want to see? So, uh, we have to go up this ladder. skip some of that part. Here it is, it's just a little hatch and a little open, completely open room. It had heating controls in here, which was good because that's an exterior wall. The old windings just been stubbed off and they connected it to the new. There's where the opening to the church would have been from this chamber. As Tor said, you can see these chambers from the parking lot. And in fact, we're right here behind this window right here. That's where I'm looking out. All right, going back down. Who's afraid of heights? So we're walking back into the swell here. That's the relay on the left. And the uh, pedal Lievelichgedeckt is there behind us. We have two chests in this division, just the same as the choir. Up on the walkboard, we've got the oboe in front and trumpet, followed by the solitional and the geigen, oxalis, flute, dolce, and the uh, vox humana and the trumpet are in the back. They're actually easier to get to from the back. Over on this side, we have the clarion followed by the harmonic flute, and then the sharf is stuck down there in between. swell motors. They took those out at some point and they were too big to carry out, so they're just still here. But we go around to the back and we can see the 16-foot end of the Pizana. The 8-foot and the Vaxi are there on the back of the chest. 
at all that complicated winding under here. Now when tuning this organ, uh, it's very sometimes difficult to yell out to uh, the key holder. So years ago, I actually built this and put it in here. It allows you to play these divisions from inside this room. So the tuner and the key holder can be in the same room. There's a little circuit board uh, underneath that controls all of that. And you can turn on the stops manually from the relay over here. Uh, so nobody's thought to take it out. So it's still here. And of course, this is the Walker PD3. That's where all of the digital stops come from. They're all wired to here, even though the speakers are throughout the church. And of course, this is the stack of amplifiers that uh, powers all of those amazing voices. So it takes a lot of electronics to, to make just those few sounds sound as good as they do in this room. So now we're in the choir. Here's the first chest on the choir side. It has the reeds. Stepping around the big hole in the floor and going around to the back, we see some of the pedal stops. There is the tuba. That supposedly was in the 1915 Kilgan. It's been painted, so it's nice and shiny, but it looks like it could have been in there. And then we have some more Haskell wood pipes there in the back. Another tremolo line going up in the air. Now we're up on the wind chest. And we see the clarinet and the English horn. And then the back, the Wicks additions. Those are the mixtures and upper work that were added in the 90s. Here on the other chest, we've got the uh, septium right in front, and then the suave flute, the roar nazard. Tears it down there, the undamaris. Fugara and the Piccolo. Four foot Gedeckt, 16 foot Dulciana, and then the eight foot Geigen is in the back. They're all nicely labeled on the chests. This is, um, I assume, a molar swell motor. I've never actually seen one exactly like this. These replaced the big ones that were in there. It's possible somebody else changed these along the way. They don't look like anything Wix would have done, but I could be wrong. There's two in each division that operate the swell shades. But as you can see, there's the opening. And I'm putting the camera through the bottom of the swell shades, and there's still a big piece of material here between the bottom of the shade and the bottom of the tone opening. So it's a little bit of a misalignment, unfortunately. It makes it hard for the sound to get out into the room. There's a couple of things here on the console that I wanted to point out that are, are kind of interesting. Um, first of all, a couple of the divisions have what's called a melody octave. So if I'm playing a note here and I turn on the melody octave, it's almost like a supercoupler, except it only supercouples the very top note. So it allows you to sort of brighten up the melody in a chord. can bounce around if your playing is not the best, so you have to be careful with that. In addition, we have something called the great melodic bass. Uh, so if I'm playing something on the great, and I turn on some pedal, the bottom note automatically becomes whatever's in the pedal division. So it's sort of a pedal to great coupler, but it only plays the bottom note. So it's a, a nice easy way, if you're not comfortable playing with the pedals, that you can uh, make that work. Every division cancels uh, by pressing the nameplate at the top, which I like that little trick a lot. It's handy when you're quickly trying to register something to just turn it off and pull on what you want. Some other little things, of course, having all swells to swell. That allows you to put all four swell shoes on just the swell. So I'm closing the gallery, the choir, the swell, and the solo with just one. This console also has a pedal divide. What the pedal divide does is it takes whatever you're playing in the pedal. And the bottom octave is normal but everything from middle C up is drawn from the grate to pedal. You have to have some stops drawn in the grate, the grate to pedal on. So you only get pedal in the bottom part, but you get grate to pedal in the top. Not only up to C, you gotta remember where that ends. Uh, we also have a great choir transfer, which puts the great manual on the bottom, like a French organ would have, and the choirs on the, on the great manual there, so you can easily play French music a little, a little more if you want. This organ also has ventils. Now, they're not true ventils in the chests. They're uh, electronic ones. Celeste's off, mixture's off, and reed's off. So if I've got uh, 
say uh, something with the reeds on. But I'm not ready for the reeds, I can hit reeds off. And then at the right time, either by pressing that piston or there is a toe spoon down here. Also very French and handy for some French music. Uh, same thing with the Celeste and the mixtures. So you don't have to reach over and grab mixtures in every division. You can turn them all on, have them prepared. And then when you press mixtures off, then uh, it cycles off and you're back to it. Now I mentioned earlier about always leaving the swell shades closed because they might interfere if you go up to the gallery console. They have a special button down here, gallery console cancel. That's in case somebody left some stops on in that console because then they would play automatically even if uh, you didn't want them to. So that's a, a good way to cancel stops on the other side of the room. It'd be really annoying to have to get up and run all the way back there if somebody left some stops on. Now I don't know if you could tell when Horse was demonstrating because our microphones were out in the room, uh, but there's quite a bit of delay in the sound getting to you here at the console if you're playing on the gallery division. So if I've got uh, a stop on and coupled to the grate, it took almost a half second. So that's something to really adjust to uh, when you're playing this instrument. Everything else is right here above us and sounds fairly instant, but that's uh, one of the tricks of this organ. And now we're going back to the gallery where we left off before we came to the swell. So now we go to the last division in the gallery, and that is the dome division. So uh, follow me and we'll head out there. So here we've come to the dome division. Uh, this is a set of uh, principal chorus and a cornet uh, that is specifically just to help bring some brightness and, and sound, especially when leading congregational singing uh, out into the room. Uh, because the congregation is so far away from a lot of the brightest sounds in the choir and the swell, this really helps to liven up the sound of the organ and the congregation can sing along a little easier. This division was installed in early 2000 uh, by Wix. Uh, they did not build the case, somebody from the church uh, built that. They wanted it to be very subtle and to blend in with the wall. So that's why it's just a stained wood. We can take a look underneath. Opening is just as simple as. The first thing we see is the relay right here in front. Easy to get to. Not much else in here. I'm told the radiator has been shut off. This division does have its own blower, sitting there in a box. We take it the missing lid means that somebody's been oiling it regularly. Of course, these are Wix chests, so again, we see Schwimmer regulators underneath. And then down on the floor, we have what's known colloquially as a Wally regulator, which is very good for small chests like this and low pressures. Close it. This dome division was donated by the organist and composer Charlie Callahan. He's a big fan of this room and this organ. Uh, in fact, he played the dedication of the uh, Wix modifications and even dedicated this section when it went in. This is actually known as the Charles Sr. and Mary Margaret Callahan uh, Memorial Division. He donated those pipes in memory of his parents. He's recorded a couple of CDs here too, and uh, there are a number of CDs that have been recorded on this organ. Normally around here, we would be demonstrating the organ for you, playing some music, or we would have already done it. Um, we have tons of recordings of this organ on our YouTube channel. In fact, there's a whole uh, playlist just for this organ, and I've got a link to it up here, so you can uh, click there and, and listen to lots of different organists playing this wonderful instrument. That's it for our tour. Remember, if you want streaming classical organ music 24 hours a day, you can visit our three stations, OrganLive.com, Positively Baroque, and The Organ Experience. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, and please remember to subscribe. Uh, you'll get notifications as new videos come out, which I hope will be back making new videos very soon. Stay safe, stay apart from each other, stay healthy, uh, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.